right, we are back with another edition of Digging Deep. I am joined by Mike Bielby. Uh I'm obviously Sergio Pinero, and uh, we're here to discuss a sleeper fight that takes place this weekend uh, between Alex Caceres and Kevin Kroom. Uh, what's your thoughts on the on the matchup? Well, uh, one thing I got to point out, it's kind of funny, the experience difference. Uh, we spoke about it last week with Arlovsky and Aspinall. Well, when I say experience, I'm talking more just UFC. Kevin Grimm's yep. got tons of experience. People may not know that just because he's got about, I don't know, 30 seconds in the UFC. And Caceres has been around since, I think, 2010. Interesting, but that's usually an advantage Caceres has over his opponents, and I don't think he has it here. Yeah, that's actually something that kind of surprised me as well was the, the advantage that uh, that Kroom actually has in experience. Obviously, like you said, he only had 30 seconds in the UFC, but his experience on the regional scene is ridiculous. Um, so I, I think it's a great matchup stylistically. I think both guys are a lot of fun to watch. I'm a fan of both guys. And, uh, man, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into the tail of tape. So we've got... Kevin Kroom, uh, he's 21 and 12, obviously only one fight in the UFC. Uh, and most recently, he had his win overturned due to a, uh, a violation. Um, this fight, obviously, is taking place at Featherweight. He's 33 years old, 5'11", 145 pounds, 73 inch reach. Then we've got Alex Caceres, 17 and 12, 32 years of age, 5'10", 73.5 inch reach. So they're pretty much identical in every category, I think the only thing that kind of plays an advantage to Alex Caceres is UFC level experience, but not necessarily Octagon experience. So, um, what was your thoughts when it was first announced? I love this uh, stylistically. I think um, if Kr like Kroom loves to move forward, and the the best way to like engage with Caceres is is just getting in his face. He's so good at moving laterally, moving backwards. You got kind of two Swiss army knives going against each other here. Both are good on the mat. Uh, both are good at striking. I give Caceres a slight uh, like technical edge. When he's flowing, it's it's pretty amazing to watch. But Kroom likes to get dirty. Uh, so I, I think if he can kind of slowly, for lack of a better word, break Caceres over three rounds, I think he could win this one. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's been working uh, with James Krause, who right now I think is one of the best in the business. Um, and you're seeing the, the level of grappling that's taking place at that uh, at that gym. You saw it last week with Derek Minner, what he was able to do to Charles Rosa, um, obviously Grant Dawson as well. They've got a very, very good stable, especially in around that 135, 145-pound range, uh, which is actually great for, um, for Kevin Kroom. Alex Caceres, like you said, he's very experienced, and – when you think about – when I look at his, his fights, he's on a three-fight winning streak, which to me is surprising because usually he just bounces back, wins and losses. Um, I was a bit surprised at the matchup because of that. I mean, the guys fought everybody. He's fought guys like Uriah Faber. The list goes on and on. He uh, – Sergio Pettis. Um, he has a win over Sergio Pettis, which is ridiculous too. And uh, three-fight winning streak, and they're giving you someone who's – Technically, 0-0-1 in the UFC, so it was a bit it was a bit uh, bit surprising for me. But that being said, Kevin Kroom is very good. Um, not a lot of people know who he is if they strictly watch UFC. But if you're a fan of the sport in general, um, you know what this guy can bring. And to go in on literally, I think it was like 36 hour notice, got on a plane, flew to the event without knowing who his opponent was, up a weight class and got the win inside the first round. This guy's dangerous uh, anywhere the fight goes. So it's a very, very compelling matchup, and I love it. Yeah, I know something Kevin Kroom's got going for him, too. If anybody watched that fight, they're a fan of him. It, it was quick, but it was just the look on his face when he looked over at his corner afterwards. I mean, he was just in disbelief for a bit, and then he's screaming so fired up. Uh, he's super charismatic when he, when he speaks to media. Like, he... When he talks, I get excited for his fights, like, on the spot. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just so fired up for this one. I think uh, I think we're going to be seeing some some blood on the canvas. Yeah, his personality is very contagious. Uh, that's probably the best way to put it. I mean, he had no money going into that fight. He's vocal about it. He was broke. He goes out there, gets the win, gets the bonus. Uh, it was life-changing for him. And I think a win over Alex Caceres would be huge. You you beat a guy who has 23 UFC fights. 
Like that is ridiculous. I look at Alex Caceres and I look at him for whatever reason, he hasn't aged to me. He's still like this up and coming prospect, but he has 23 fights inside the UFC, which is insane. Uh, he's one of the most experienced guys at, uh, at 145 and he used to fight 135 pounds. Um, one of the most experienced guys inside the, in, inside the UFC. And for some reason, I still think of him as his up and coming prospect. <laughs> Well, there's tons of potential there, so I, like I understand where you're coming from. And he, he, the last couple of fights, he seems like he's improving. I, um, he switched camps, I believe, didn't he? Move to Florida. Uh, yeah. He's kind of, you know, we're kind of seeing Alex Caceres 2.0, if you want to call it that. And this is another big test. If, if he wins over Kevin Kroom, that streak's starting to look nice with some pretty good names on it. That being said, who do you think is has more to gain in this fight? Obviously, Kevin Kroom with the win over Alex Caceres is massive, but given Alex Caceres, where he's been, you know, the ups and downs in his career. Uh, which one do you think has more to gain? And which one do you think, you know what, even if a, even a loss wouldn't impact them as much? Kevin Kroom, uh, for sure. Just because Alex Caceres has just been a U.S. Like, he's just been there for so long. Guy that was in a main event back in the day. Um, and then if Kroom, even, you know, if, if he loses a close fight and just it's a good fight, there's no shame in that. Caceres is... We all know he's a great fighter. He hasn't, uh, his record in the UFC, you know, like you said, it kind of goes back and forth, but we all kind of know he's had the talent to eventually go on a winning streak. It was just kind of a matter of time. Is it fair to say that this is kind of where Alex Caceres thrives? Like I, in my eyes, it's like when they feed him this up and coming prospect, I know Kevin Groom isn't necessarily up and coming, but in terms of the UFC eyes, uh, fans of the UFC, their their eyes. This is a guy who's up and coming, up and coming prospect. Um, you know, you look you look at guys like Chase Chase Hooper, Sergio Pettis. I think this is where Alex Caceres does his best work. Uh, would you agree with that statement? Yeah, no, I I 100% agree with that. But those guys didn't have that experience that Kroom has on the regional scene. So it's interesting. Some people going into this fight are thinking that exact thing, but it might not be true. If Kroom just goes out there and moves forward, uh, doesn't let uh, Caceres get into that kind of cruise control mode, because when he's flowing, it's it's pretty beautiful to watch. That's uh, Kroom's going to have to keep moving forward. That's I keep saying that, but his pace and pressure is huge in this one for me. So that to you is the key to victory there for. Uh, oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, pace and pressure. And for, for Alex Caceres, it would be trying to keep things at range and, and, and distance. Stay on the outside. Use his footwork. It's it's amazing. He's got some great footwork. Uh, yeah, just kind of keep uh, stick and poke. Stick and move. <laughs> All right. And then I'll ask you one last question before we call this. Um, if you had to make a prediction, I know we, we, we talk about our predictions in the chat. We don't really share them out uh too vocally, but if you had to make a pick, if if you had a gun pressed to your head, you're you're gonna pick one. Who would who would you pick? Kevin Kroom. I I just think he loves to move forward, and I think that's a good way to beat Caceres, Whether it's a finish, um, you know, last time he took out Roosevelt Roberts hard with a left, and then got the submission. He could have followed that up with ground and whatever. You know, he's capable of getting the knockout, capable of getting the submission. And then I think he can even win a decision. Caceres, because obviously a great case to win too, but my pick would be Kroom. Yeah, I think this is an interesting one because I found in the first one, he had absolutely nothing to lose. He goes up there, he loses, no big deal. Um, and it wasn't really like he was fighting desperate, but he had nothing to lose. And he just kind of went out there full steam ahead, similar to what Justin James did in his debut. It's going to be interesting to see what he does in this one. Like, are you going to come out, you know, guns blazing from the – from the get-go. Um, and if so, I don't think that works against Alex Caceres. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I'm just going to say with the UFC experience, I'm going to have to lean Alex Caceres. That being said, I wouldn't be surprised if Kevin Groom went out there and got it done. But I just think UFC experience tends to, to lead me towards um, Caceres. But man, I'm excited for this one. And I think this one could be one of the best fights on that entire card. Yeah, no, this would be my pick for fight of the night. I'm glad we talked about it. It's, it needs some love. All right, there you have it. I'm Sergio Pinero. That's Mike Vilby. Do you have anything else to add? I'm excited. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time.